for the first time in history, in human history, children are being directly marketed to. It, it used to be, even when I was a kid, for the most part, my parents were in a position to censor what I saw to buy. I mean, the main, the main source of information about what to buy in my family came in this form of the Sears and Roebuck catalog. If my mother and dad didn't want me to get something, they just cut the pictures out. <laughs> so, control over the access to information. I couldn't walk into a supermarket and see all the stuff that was there on the shelves. I, there was no Toys R Us. There were none of those kind of places. And there sure as the world wasn't a television to market to me. The closest we came to direct marketing to kids, and this was the beginning of it, this kind of thing was the beginning of it, was I remember Captain Midnight was on radio. When the radio came along, we then had, you know, these daily shows. One of them was Captain Midnight. And Captain Midnight was, ad was brought on to the, to the airwaves by virtue of sponsorship by Ovaltine. And you could send in two Ovaltine wrappers, and they would send you a secret decoder for the Captain Midnight's secret message that would give you a lead on what was going to happen in the next episode. And every kid would buy, go and pester their mom to buy Ovaltine. I hated the stuff, but I bought Ovaltine. <laughs> every, every youngster wanted that sort of thing. Now look at the marketing that's going on. It's impossible to keep kids away from seeing things they want. It's also impossible to keep kids away from seeing adult things. And we try to we say, well, we'll censor this. We'll put, we'll put a block on our television. Let me tell you a little story. I have a grandson. He's five years old. He'll be six in January. Started to kindergarten this fall. He and I were watching a baseball game. He doesn't understand baseball, but he likes to do stuff with Grandpa, and so I was watching a Reds game. Now, I don't know where they were playing, but he's learning to read and learning to sound out words. And he was watching this guy bat, and he started looking, and he started, v, v. What's that word, Grandpa? It's Viagra is what it is. <laughs> Behind home plate. There's the American pastime. Not Viagra, <laughs> but baseball. And all at once, Grandpa is put into trying to explain to a five-year-old. I didn't, I just passed, I just did medicine. But for a moment, I had to think. When he said, what's Viagra? Well, what do I say? And I said, it's just medicine that big people use or something like that. <laughs> that satisfied a five-year-old. But the point is, that kind of invasion into the hearts and minds of children is occurring every day. And that's a competitive world in which you live that I didn't have to live much. I lived it a little. It was just beginning. But it's happened to us over that 50 years of my career to the point that more and more of the important stuff that kids learn, they learn without benefit of it being filtered through the traditional adult filters of the church, the family, and the school. And they do it because these people understand something that we refuse to accept. Because our whole system is predicated on the assumption that children owe us their attention because tradition says so. And they don't, we don't have to earn their attention. They do what we tell them to do because that's what you're supposed to do. And if we say engage in this activity, and we've got words like respect. And we've got words like I'm a big person. And I still say that to my grandson. Do this because I tell you. But I've got to... When I want to get his attention, I have to compete with the television. Now I can turn the television off. Or I have to compete with Game Boy. Or I have to compete with LeapFrog. And I, there's a whole bunch of things. My father didn't have to 
compete with. He, he might have competed with me daydreaming. You know, he could say, hey, pay attention here. I'm talking to you. But I wasn't attending to something else except something was in my head. Now they got a whole bunch of stuff to attend to. When I went home from school and got done doing my chores, and my mother said, do your homework, she didn't have to tell me to turn one thing off. I didn't have anything to turn on. <laughs> and in fact, homework, in many ways, was a form of entertainment for my sister and myself. That our world was sufficiently bleak that homework gave us something to do. We didn't have all that entertainment value. So therefore, my teacher didn't have to construct very engaging homework for us to be willing to do it. My sister and I used to, used to make a game out of our spelling words. She was a year behind me in school. And she had spelling words and I had spelling words. And whichever one of us got them perfect didn't have to do some onerous chore. In fact, in many ways, playing school was part of what we did. And lots of kids did. Now that's a pretty boring thing compared to all the games that my grandson has already on his computer. So we have to understand that we're in a different world and if we don't understand that kids are volunteers. They've always been volunteers, but we didn't have to worry about it. Because we had a monopoly. If you, weren't gonna, if you were going to get anything engaging at all, you were going to get it from your family, your church, or your school. Today, there are people out there that have billions of dollars that are trying to engage the minds and hearts of the same kids whose hearts and minds you're just trying to control. And so what we wind up with is we've got three ways of responding. We, we either engage them or we force them to be compliant or we suppress them. And we have some kids we just suppress. We just simply say, look, we can't do anything with this kid, but my God, we'll put them someplace. And we've always done that. We used to put them out of school. Now we hold them in holding pens. We've got another group of kids that we say, we'll get you to do what we have to get you to do because you've got to do this stuff so that you get high enough a score on the test to keep me out of trouble. Then we've got a few kids that like what we're doing, and they get engaged. In the meantime, those kids that used to be, get engaged they're, now all these other people are competing for their attention. And we're finding we're losing more and more of them. And we're losing the battle because we don't think about, we have to be intentional about engagement. 